are these people? So let's just get into it. So we'll watch some of mm. the debate. Um, so the op-ed that I'm going to refer to kind of goes into different topics. They all kind of relate. Uh, but I feel this is kind of the thesis of why this op-ed was written in the first place. So this this part was after the second commercial break where they started talking about Black people in terms of how disappointed they might feel in terms of what Biden didn't accomplish, particularly for Black people uh, in this past term. Um, that would have been a great discussion to have talk about reparations or other stuff, but mm -hmm. I digress. But anyway, um, so we'll watch, I'll say, in less than five minutes uh, before they go into the next topic, uh, and then we'll get into the article. So okay. you can go ahead when you're ready. Yay. Oh, wait. And full screen. And you know what? Just because we're going to do this and this. Right. In a second term. President Biden, while black unemployment dropped to a record low under your presidency, black families still earned far less than white families. Black mothers are still three times more likely to die from pregnancy related causes. And black Americans are imprisoned at five times the rate of white Americans. What do you say to black voters who are disappointed that you haven't made more progress? To acknowledge you made a lot of progress, number one. The fact of the matter is there's more small black businesses that have been started than any time in history. Number two, the wages of black, black unemployment is the lowest level it's been in a long, long time. Number three, we find it, we find it providing housing for black Americans and dealing with the segregation that exists among these corporate, these corporate operations that collude to keep people out of their houses. And in addition to that, we find that the impact of on the, the choice that black families have to make relative to child care is incre incredibly difficult. When we did the first major piece of legislation in the past, I was able to reduce black child care costs. I cut them in half, in half. We've got to make sure we provide for child care costs. We've got to make sure, we, because when you provide those child care protections, you increase economic growth because more people can be in the, in the job market. So can there's I more to be done, considerably more to be done. I didn't want to stop, but I thought it was very interesting. And it's funny that I don't think anyone has talked about. He talks about childcare as if that's a black issue. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being that I'm in early childhood, it's not. It's, a, I would argue, a huge, well, a Western issue. Yeah. Um, but and you ain't black. He talks about it in terms of as, you know, it's an issue that is specific to mm -hmm. Black people. Funny how yeah. I haven't heard anyone necessarily say anything regarding what he said there regarding child care. Um, but anyway, keep going. Also, um, before we go on, you notice how he, when she said, Dana Bash said, you know, what do you have to say to black people who are disappointed? He immediately went in and was kind of like, well, we did stuff for them. And he's sorry, yeah. that's not, but, and she's going to ask him again, but you notice how he just mm -hmm. kind of, kind of dismisses what she said in terms yeah. of him saying, you know, I did stuff. So the blacks should be grateful that I did these things. So kind of that, kind of that attitude to me, yeah. in my opinion. So, um, so, you know, even there, he just kind of dismissed the question and just kind of not to say those things that he mentioned aren't necessarily good, but not everyone is going to benefit from the policies that um, that he mentioned here. No talk about universal health care. No talk about increasing wages. No talk about, you know, policing. We'll we'll get into that when we read the article. So here's just clap for that. Off of, here's, here's the stuff that we've done. Here's the crumbs we give the black people and 
shove it. That's the attitude that mm-hmm. I basically get from that. Yeah, so, essentially. I don't care about you. I just want your vote. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> But we've done a great deal so far, and I'm not letting up. The audio now. janky for you, too, you or is it just 49 me? 49 seconds left. What do you say to black um, voters who are disappointed with the fine. progress so far? I say I don't blame them for being disappointed. Inflation is still hurting them badly. For example, I provided for the idea that any black family, first-time home buyer, should get a $10,000 tax credit to be able to buy their first home so they can get started. I made sure that we're in a situation where all those black families and those black individuals who provided to had to take out student loans that were ballooning, that if they were engaged in nursing, doctor, and any, anything having to do with volunteerism, if they paid their bills for 10 years on their student debt, all the rest was forgiven after 10 years. Millions have benefited from that. And we're going to do a whole lot more for black families. Thank you, President Trump. And he caused the inflation. He's blaming inflation. And he's right, it's been very bad. He caused the inflation, and it's killing black families and Hispanic families and just about everybody. It's killing people. They can't buy groceries anymore. They can't. You look at the cost of food where it's doubled and tripled and quadrupled. They can't live. They're not living anymore. He caused this inflation. I gave him a country with no, essentially no inflation. It was perfect. It was so good. All he had to do is leave it alone. He destroyed it with his Green New Scam and all of the other, all this money that's being thrown out the window. He caused inflation. As sure as you're sitting there, the fact is that his big kill on the black people is the millions of people that he's allowed to come in through the border. They're taking black jobs now. And it could be 18, it could be 19, and even 20 million people. They're taking black jobs and they're taking Hispanic jobs. And you haven't seen it yet, but you're going to see something that's going to be the worst in our history. Thank you. President- yeah. They, so- they took our germs? This, yeah, that's where the black uh, comment black came terms? from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, it was just more or less like he talked about housing. He talked about student loans. Yes. But that's not what Dana was necessarily asking. It was, I felt she was kind of asking what are the issues that are specific to black people? Policing, as I said, reparations is another one, but she's not going to talk about that. No, not with those two idiots. No. So that's what she was asking. And, you know, Biden was just kind of dismissive in terms of, you know, not even dismissive, but just like, here's the stuff that I did do. Yeah, but those things benefit everybody, not just black people. So, and, you know, of course, Trump just kind of went off on a tangent. Uh, but that goes along with, um, here we go. You can go to full screen. Um, this goes into the op-ed that I pulled. Uh, this is from Truefout, written by Alex S. Vital, uh, where he writes, Biden offered no alternative to Trump's policing authoritarianism in debate. Uh, Biden did not put forth a progressive or convincing counterweight to Trump's xenophobic and authoritarian tirades. So Alex continued, in 2020, the US experienced some of the largest protests in its history focused on police violence and demands to restructure public safety. Unfortunately, the CNN moderators at Thursday night's presidential debate saw no need to directly ask candidates about these issues. And while some of them did arise in the context of the opioid crisis, border enforcement, and the overall well-being of Black America, as we just watched. The answers offered by both candidates lacked a clear political program. Donald Trump's overarching narrative for the debate was that Joe Biden has diminished U.S. power by opening the border and allowing millions of illegal immigrants released from prisons, jails, and mental institutions to come into the country to take our jobs, overwhelm our health care and social security systems, and rape and kill us. This narrative of declining American strength and safety absolves the multinational corporations and Wall Street of poisoning us, creating massive inequity and destroying the planet, the true sources of middle and working class insecurity. Trump's solution is ever more resources for police, prisons, and the deportation state. In response to this powerfully toxic narrative, Biden tweeted the fact that he just put more police on the streets and made a few weak claims that police and the Border Patrol support him, 
hardly a progressive or convincing counterweight to Trump's xenophobic and authoritarian tirades. Pause. We've covered yeah. how Biden has made it worse for immigrants. Yes. And made it harder to immigrate. And yeah. made deportation more of a problem. Right. So... Funny, because even CNN had to fact check Biden on that yeah. uh, after the fact. I uh, also... Isn't it? Uh, uh, this was this was the case. Like, I want to say four ten years ago, that like there's more immigrants leaving the country than like heading back to Mexico than coming here. Yeah, probably. Uh, that sounds about I, I, right. I, that might not be the case now. I mean, there's also the weird stuff supposedly about immigrants being put on buses and taken to sanctuary cities and. Right. I don't I don't know the validity to some of that. It seems a bit like too convenient, you know? So and to what end I'm not sure. I'm right. sure there's some tinfoil hats in the chat that might know more than me, but you know. Well you know, if Trump was smart, that could have been an issue he could have brought up against Biden. Yeah. You know, in terms of oh, now, evil one of them, but at least for Trump, you could have made the argument that your immigrants are being sent to sanctionary cities, which are typically liberal cities. Yeah. And well, in certain cases, like we know in Chicago, that immigrants are getting more perks to the detriment of, you know, especially black uh, people who have lived in Chicago forever. Uh, so they're kind of pissed about that. But then, like, the idea that certain immigrants, depending on the country, uh, country, depending on the city that they go to, are kind of shuffled around because the people living there don't want necessarily want them in their neighborhood, so to speak. Yeah. So that could have been something Trump could have brought up if he was smarter. Now, then again, Biden could have also countered with, you know, immigrants coming at the border and Republican governors basically shipping them off to other um, to other cities. So you could have made a case either way, but basically none, neither one of them mentioned that. Um, so I think that was a huge loss for both of them in terms of, you know, they kind of talked around the issue, but they didn't get to the heart, and they didn't offer solutions as to how to deal with that problem along, among other issues. Speaking of... Yeah. When asked about the fentanyl crisis, Biden focused on interdiction issues such as blocking persecuted chemicals and machinery needed to process fentanyl from coming into Mexico. Yeah. There was no mention of expanding health care and harm reduction services or exploring controlled safe distribution of opioids, which would immediately reduce the presence of fentanyl and dramatically reduce the likelihood of drug overdoses. Trump failed to even answer the question, using his time to hammer home his core messages about migrants as threats and Biden's overall incompetence. Rather than pointing out Trump's utter lack of concern for people's well-being, Biden's rebuttal fell into the trap of trying to respond to Trump's tirades, allowing the former president to control the agenda and tone of debate. And I think ultimately that he was didn't the have to do issue. anything. He just right. sat he there. Didn't count. Well, even with the idea like the black jobs quote, Biden didn't count it at at all. Like, he no. just kind of let him just go off on that tangent, or when Biden, no, Trump called him, Biden, a bad Palestinian, as a slur, yeah. didn't even counter that. And you would no, figure that we'll... given that Israel, oh, Gaza is a big issue right I've now, got a that video on, had a lot more to say. On that but Biden bit, did. for sure. Um, right. That I'll bring. But yeah, ooh, that requires this. Whoop. Zooming in, yes. Thank you. Yeah. The candidates were asked a generic question about the stubborn racial disparities in economic, critical, legal, and social outcomes for Black Americans. Trump used this as an opportunity to point out how little progress has been made under Biden and that Biden helped drive these disparities through his embrace of the super predator myth in the 1990s. Trump also had the audacity to claim to support police reform though he failed to define what that is. Biden rightfully pointed out that 
the employment gains experienced by Black Americans under his administration and the variety of social and economic educational programs he supports that would have a disproportional positive impact on the Black community, such as expanding child, cre child care tax credits, which you lost under your term, by the way, yeah. um, Pell Grants, and support for historically Black colleges and universities. But he did nothing to address the enormous disparities in the criminal legal system, despite the fact that his administration has taken a few concrete steps in this direction, such as funding police-based violence reduction initiatives. Uh -huh. <sighs> Except, where's it, where those where, lo, where all those cop cities coming from? Right. Where's that funding coming from? Right. Like, like I would um... argue that he's funding the police state more versus. Who wrote the crime bill again? Program. What's who that? that? Who wrote the crime bill again? Oh. Who who did that? <laughs> again, people forget Biden wasn't always demented. I mean, well, right. arguably demented throughout his entire career. But I don't mean in the sense of he had some marbles left when he was trying to cut Medicare and push for more police heavy states and you know talking about super predators and yada 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 like you know people forget that crap he pretty much believed the same things trump believed now right so uh, there ain't no difference hate to tell right. you and i think that i think the debate in a lot of ways proved that it was just yeah. neither one of them both of them are more alike in terms of policy than different yeah, Biden might do some stuff slightly better, but it's nothing radical in terms of actually helping people, especially the Black community. And we know how Trump is crazy anyway. Um, but both of them had nothing to offer in terms of any issue that is kind of pressing in the country right now. And yeah. no, and I've been well, saying this, there's no, you even go to Biden's website, like there's no real. policy. Three three zero, no right? <laughs> I mean, it's also, bro. Even when he, he, you know what it is? He just didn't have enough records played to him as a child when he went to sleep. I think that's what <laughs> the problem was. Oh god, fucking right. dumb shit. Oh, zoom back in. I'm not done. Okay, I thought you were done. No. Mm. Uh. Anyway, buy the slack. There you go. Of a clear right. response on this issue may be tied to his perception of it as a losing position. While many in the Biden administration and his key constituencies favor dialing back criminalization, they feel that it is politically impossible to state that clearly and openly. Yeah, because Pelosi basically said, we're not doing shit regarding to defund the police. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, leaving the president to quietly support some good programs while publicly leaning into a police-centered crime control strategy that will never be able to compete with Trump's undiluted authoritarianism. Yep. Uh, you can zoom out. Thank you. As long as Democrats from Biden to local city mayors lean into pro-police policies in an effort to triangulate their way into gaining the support of a few remaining independent voters, they will fail to produce either electoral victories or any semblance of justice. By validating the idea that police are the central institution of, for producing public safety, Democrats empower a narrative of authoritarian crime control that they will never obtain because the right wing will always take things one step further. Their efforts at sounding reasonable merely shift the Overton window to the right. Democrats will not be able to energize their base without a bold vision of public safety that is clearly distinct from Trump's racist rants. We need a completely different vision of the overdose crisis rooted in values of care and compassion, as well as the science of drug treatment, harm reduction, and safe supply that would save lives, restore families and communities, and disempower violent international drug cartels. Uh huh. What causes those? Our policies, I think. Uh -huh. You believe so. Um, 
We must embrace the incredible value of immigration, legal or otherwise, which has played a huge role in revitalizing whole sectors of our economy and regions of our country. We must categorically reject the policies of xenophobia and articulate values of solidarity and directly address our own role in creating the conditions that have driven people from their homes in desperation. A program of true radical ju racial justice will go beyond kneeling with Kente cough and appointing a few non-white people <laughs> to highly visible positions. Yeah. Such a program need not to be constructed as a racial zero-sum game in which one group's advancement court comes at the expense of another. A broad anti-poverty program that lifts wages and essential services like education and healthcare would partially benefit communities, particularly benefit communities of color, and will help break down racial barriers rather than reinforce them. At the center of such an effort would have to be an across-the-board reduction in our reliance on policing and prisons to address problems of poverty, social dislocation, and differential access to essential services. Trump's debate responses reflected his allegiance with the most reactionary forces in our society, those that would want to demonize migrants, unleash unregulated corporate power, and free the hands of police to use whatever forms of violence and humiliation are deemed necessary to restore some fanciful notion of order at the expense of the most vulnerable among us. Pause. Weak policies, yes. You can just reread that and replace Trump with Biden. Same thing. Yes. Like, yes. I, w why do people insist on making distinctions here when it's the same thing? Right. Like, um, I think I sent this to you, I think maybe last week, but yeah, my mayor, um, the mayor, uh, initiated a drone police drone program. Mm -hmm. We've covered, we've covered stuff like that. Yeah. We covered in, that. You've covered Minneapolis that. And, but yeah. You know, but it's the idea of like, oh, the police gets new toys while teachers cannot get a raise, yep. right? And mm -hmm. it's funny, like, I see a lot of leaders within my city pushing the police more, whereas four years ago, it was the idea of like, we want to minimize the role police have in order to have more community programs shine and take some of the pressure off uh -huh. from the police. But now they've kind of reverted back to, oh, crime is bad in D.C. or in other cities. We need more police. We've kind oh, of gone, we're... and these are Democrats who are making this call. So that robo said, dogs, all that stuff, right. AI facial recognition, mounted guns, all that stuff. Where do you think they're testing those kind of uh, of stuff on a on a like populace? Where, where do you think that's happening? Well, like... we've talked about how they're testing. Well not testing, you know, in Gaza. Uh -huh. um, Ukraine but, too. Ukraine too, but, yeah. but in many of these cop cities, and we've mentioned there's more than one. It's not just the one in Atlanta. Like, there's more being built or being proposed to be built in other states as well. So it's this mm -hmm. idea of Democrats claim that they want to that they want to do right by the people when they're actually making, creating the catalyst where someone like Trump is just going to go over the edge to the right um, and be as authoritarian as, and as fascist as we know he and the Republican Party have now become. So, yeah. um, but you're right. Like that first sentence you can replace it with biden and it would pretty much want to be it would be the same thing that yeah. being said biden's weak policies and incoherent responses during the debate may give us another four years of trump and his drive to turn the u.s into a despotic kleptocracy plutocracy yeah yeah so um, as in any kleptomaniac, you know using those latin-based root words everybody Everyone, everyone knows they're Latin. Um, Greek and Latin, got to know it. But, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, par for the course. And, you know, I think a lot of people are slow on the pickup here. You know, clearly, we've been here for a lot longer, I think. But, and normally we wouldn't cover this kind of stuff anyway. But, like, oh, I wanted to bring on the topic of Israel. We talked about that, right? 
and how there's no difference there either, correct? Correct. Um, so let me bring this and full screen this. Well, I should read it. Um, um so Rabbi explains the esoteric role of Trump, the 44th president, was meticulously placed into office because of his role as a field goal, an incarnation to lead the goyim into obedience of the Jewish nation. So we'll we'll let we'll let Rabbi Mindul K Knesson. Now, but just to understand something, so Trump therefore becomes president, which he had to. Who is Trump? Trump is a Gilgal, I mentioned last time, of Antoninus, Rome. Rome is Aesop, isn't it? You see, so he becomes an incarnation because his job is Rav Yavri Tsoi truly to assist Jews. And like I said, I realized this a long time ago. Now, but just to understand something. So, I mean, it's, he's also selected, you know? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, just as much as Biden, RFK, you know, multiple others, you know, so, like, pick one, they're all selected, so, hate to tell you, but you're not going to vote your way out of this, right. so. No, it's, yeah, and, again, it's just the idea of neither one of them had anything to offer, and that was the main critique that I have regarding the debate. Neither one of them had anything to offer that would excite people. It was just a lot of, yeah. well, Trump was just saying a lot of doom and gloom, like Project so, 25 is just popping up all over Twitter, you know, especially within the last week. And Biden is not saying anything to kind of counter to calm people or at least be the leader of, you know what, I got this. Here's my vision. Here's my plan. Here's my way to move forward. There's been no semblance of urgency or leadership from him that would make people feel comfortable and confident that he has got a hold of this. But mm -hmm. yeah, especially given like, and you can kind of fill in the blank in terms of police, but that's what uh, Alex mentioned in the article. You know, that could have been a prime time for Biden to kind of say, you know what? given what happened four years ago with George Floyd, actually, with, even with that, like, let's talk about safety for Black people with the police. Didn't even mention that. So that's what Dana was kind of, I guess, mentioning or trying to get Biden to kind of speak about those things. But as Alex said, it's now become taboo to kind of talk about defund the police. Yeah. So he had to kind of mention, oh, all I'm going to do is all I'm going to say is I funded the police more, which is something Trump would definitely do. But on the street, that's not what people want. And I, as I said, I'm seeing a lot of Democratic-leaning leaders, especially in D.C., who are now pushing for more police again. Um, you've seen me, you know, on Twitter, like, talking to, like, a few of these leaders. But, you know, but we're kind of shifting back war to the right in terms of bringing that order in terms of policing along with other issues versus actually moving toward the bend of justice. Um, so that's where both of them were extremely lacking and why we're fought, as yep. Christy would say. Takes a second to get to that one. I think it's yeah. We're f Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yep. um, um, but like I said, we'll probably clip this. We'll save this in the archives. We'll probably we'll probably refer to this <laughs> at some point in the near future. I can predict. Yep. But in the meantime, you know, s stories like this is the reason why YouTube hates us demonetize us and suppresses us uh, on the platform. So the best way you can help us is by, see that link on the screen uh, at Kofi. You can donate there. Or if you type in at 
donate in the chat. It will also pull up the the link where you can donate to us directly, donate. or that QR code there. You can scan it and you can give to us there. Um, we really appreciate your donations in order to help, as you say, we keep the lights on yeah. uh, in order to deliver us, bring you guys more content. Um, also so because we are suppressed down below. Um, yes. All the links to where you can give money are in the description. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and please share the stream uh, and clips to fight the suppression that we're having on YouTube and to make sure you leave a comment that actually does help in the algorithm, believe it or not. Um, help i and get to, you said three, I'm going to say five, just so you don't have to keep changing it like everyone <laughs> else do though. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you.